Hi. I see your little your little thumbnail. I see you hiding behind smiling. Hello. I just realized that I forgot my uh, I need to get a brush I forgot for my project, but before I do I wanted to greet everyone. Hello everyone. Hi Julie. Hi Byron. Oh thank you. Welcome everybody. So Angie. Nice. Angie. Hi Karen. Nice of you to join us. Oh, oh it's just been a of the week. That's Sweet. Karen, you're mad at us? Okay. <laughs> Karen is definitely not mad. It's the Facebook playing mm. games. Hello, TMA. TMA. I think um, in in Italian, TMO is uh, I love you or something. So I uh, that's a pretty oh, name. Oh, that's very nice. Hey, Julie. Julie is in route back from an afternoon a video conference clients. Nice. Hey, Lynn. Hey, I Bobby. Love you. Welcome everybody. So we're, guess, guess what we're doing today? We're decorating cookies. <laughs> and um, I'm going to be doing uh, um, turkey cookies. You guys have been asking for it so much, so I caved in. <laughs> but Friday, it's Christmas. I promise. I promise. Keeping my fingers crossed. Yes. Like the way you yeah. said it, I was like, "What? It, Friday's Christmas? I'm a little behind." No, yeah. no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Friday is definitely not Christmas, guys. Don't listen to me. It's well, I good. posted. I shared a story on my story of Mariah Carey. I don't know if you what, saw what, it. What, no, I did not. What happened? So Mariah Carey makes a ton of money from a ton her of money story. every Christmas. I, I yes. So yes. she basically launched Christmas season on her story today. She so you guys, that song, yes. Yes, it's pretty funny. I wish we could, we, we had a video like that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like really? a seasonal video that we could like. Hello. So am I going to kick it off? And you well, can, you. I don't know. That you're... Yes, please. I'm going to, I'm going to disappear for a second to get my tool. I forgot my, my, I need a quarter inch uh, brush. So I'll disappear for a few seconds. So today I am kicking off, well, no, I've done Christmas. I did Santa a little while ago. What am I saying? So, um, oh, glad you're liking her recipe. If you guys want to check out her blog here, let me just pop it up on, um, where's the, if you want to, oh. I have to repress this. There's her blog. If you guys want to check it out on her homepage is where she actually has her recipes. And I also have made in the past her, um, her um, soft cook. Why is it? Oh, I have it on photo and not video. Oopsie. Yes, yeah, she has her soft cookie recipe that I use when I make the buttercream cookies and it is so good. So, um, you guys should check it out. Okay, so yes, I'm making some holiday cookies. And I'm, I mean, Christmas trees and all the standard stuff can be decorated in like a thousand ways. So I'm just trying to think differently than anything I've done in the past. Just trying to give you guys some decorating um, ideas, you know? I don't have that cutter. I love that cutter. I have a lot of tree cutters. I love that cutter. Well, this cutter can easily be done. So last year we actually did live streams as well. So if you guys want to look back to last year's Christmas series, we did some nice stuff and I actually made a triangle tree just by cutting a circle and then, you know, cutting it in like pie shapes and you get essentially the same shape, right? Doing it that way, hand cutting it. Bought that you recently... Yeah, it's a, it's a fun shape. This shape is actually by Copper Gifts. And Copper Gifts, sadly, from what I saw, they went out of business. Okay, so these bows actually are a little overcooked, I would say. Uh, what happens when you make small cookies, thin small cookies? You really have to watch them. So I, that's why I'm kind of showing them to you. And the other thing I wanted to show you guys is if you're adding smaller cookies to a, a base cookie... You want to maybe consider rolling them slightly thinner. If they're thinner, they're not as bulky on the top. It makes them look a little bit more, I don't know, proportionate, I want to say, so that it's not so, so heavy on the, on the top of the, of the cookie. 
you know, it like makes it a little oversized. Here I have one actually that's full thickness and you can see it just makes it, it's just less dainty, I guess I, you could say. So if you look at the bow, this is a bow that's only available at How Sweet Is That. She gets a few custom shapes made herself. That's a really nice bow. I like that it's not... Not yeah, I don't know, Diane. Time, you know where you can get these bows in, uh, during Halloween time? They sell the plastic. I mean, they're not probably very durable, but they are still usable. The plastic cutters for all the little Halloween, um, like they, they're big shapes and they have like little cut cutouts for the face, for the oh. bow tie and all that. Oh, yeah. I've never, this was, this one is sold separately. Diane, I don't know where you got yours, but I got it at How Sweet Is That? So this is red icing. When you're making a bow, if you want it to look like rounded, you need to work in a slightly thicker icing or put some structural icing underneath. The runnier icing is, the easier it is to heal, but it dries quite flat. So if you want to oh. have a dimensional kind of look, you need a thicker icing. Julie, I have that cutter as well. I mar, you have that cutter as well. It's a cutter That's from, a, it's a large Easter chick. And I forgot it even has a bow, but she's absolutely correct. It has a green correct. bow. And, and a perfect size. It might, yeah, it would probably work for that as well. Yes, Julie, that's a good, good, I good forgot catch. About him. Hi, Debbie. Everybody's loving it. Katie is telling you to look out that we have an extra person watching. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, I brought him in because Karen mentioned the Buster. He he was in a closet. He's a little... He's, get, he's getting claustrophobic. All right, yes. so... I'm just like puffing up this icing. And, and if your icing tends to cave, you can do those little structural wiggle lines underneath. And that's helpful to keep the icing from flopping over. Now, normally you would have to wait for this to dry to then come in and add the knot, but I'm using an M&M. And an M&M is just a fast way to get your bow on and you don't have to wait. Fall out, everybody feels what you, you are going through. She sorted all her cutters and now her turntable is mis misplaced. I feel you. So, so I feel your pain. We all feel your pain. Hopefully so you, you can, can see it's pain. not exactly the same color, but I find it's still cute. Oh, it's great. I like that it's not the same color. And But if you want and if it bothers you, you can just come in and do like a little squiggly line on it. And then it actually, because the background is like darker, it kind of makes it stand out. And if you want, you can just do a little, like that little extra thing, but I don't find it adds really to it. So that's that. So that's how you make the little bow and you want to set them aside. Mexico City. Thanks everyone for joining us. We're still uh, tuning in. Set them Mother aside to Christmas tree cookies and um, so this cookies. This is a uh, just a circle, and I used a smaller circle to create a little um, kind of impression in there to help me. Circles can be tricky to draw. Thank right? you, Michelle. So okay. I've got my little uh, bow, and it's had a little bit of time to crust over because if you're handling your cookie and it's still wet, well, you could very well stick your finger and crack it or dent it. So. And I'm dropping my icing line right into that little crevice that I created. And then I'm outlining the perimeter of the cookie. So this is going to be a little wreath. Now I'm doing wet on wet icing. So when you're adding secondary colors, you don't want to overfill because when you do come in with that second or third color, well, it could very well fall right off the cookie. Ideally, if your cookie is this size, you're using hybrid or dual consistency icing, which means it's the same icing to outline and flood, or else it just the outline is so big it, it, with like regards to the actual size of the cookie, you know, this is not a big cookie. So if I have the outline line and then the flood, like it, I find it kind of makes it look um, not as dainty. So my icing is not, not really healed, but it doesn't matter. And now I'm just adding dots, a gap, a dot, a gap. Now you could do it in one color, but I'm just going to add a little bit of darker green to the middle of that light green. So I'm just in the middle of each dot adding 
Oh, this is what's the consistency? Oh, it's probably 20. 20 seconds. Yeah. I like the dark green. It really it makes it pop. Yeah, it adds a little bit of something. So now I'm just going to go all the way around. I'm running my needle right through all those dots. You see? And then you get your little wreath kind of looking a little bit more branchy. And then in the wet icing, you can just drop it's in that. You little... see how it's, it's, it's a simple technique? Yeah, but effective. So now, very, very effective. I've seen it done this a few different ways, but I thought I'd just fill in a little, little bit here with that same dark green just to kind of, you know, make it look a little bit more full. You could leave it or you can do this. Well, I like that very much. So Karen has a good question. This is a question that is going to be very important in coming months, heading towards the Christmas time and all the Christmas reds that we are going to use. So no matter what I do, and I've tried everything, and I can keep my red, and she's using Emery Color Super Red from Bleeding. Any tried and true suggestions? Well, Karen, you can go on the AmeriColor site and purchase their powder. So they sell powdered food color, and that might be your saving grace. Not expensive. It's a little bottle, and you can try that. I think that might be. And yeah. it doesn't taste, and uh, I've not yeah. had any issues with the red. And this is what this is. This is powdered red. Food and since color. you've tried everything, I assume you've tried, you know, aging it. You know what I mean? By aging it, you probably try. I would add the white uh, food coloring to Royal. You probably, if you tried everything, it's very peculiar. I think then I would go to the source, and that's the royal icing. You know, so maybe maybe the meringue powder is the is a culprit. So now this has had time to crust over. So I'm just with that same red, just sprinkling on a few little berries just to brighten it up. You can use pearls and the wet icing if you'd rather. But the pearls can be a little hard on the teeth, depending on the brand you're using. Yes, absolutely. And yes, June, thank you. I, I I forgot. And there is, isn't the wreath pretty on my cutting board? <laughs> it is pretty. Debbie also has a good suggestion to start with pink, so you don't have to add. Yes. Uh, it, it does help. Yes. All right, so now here is that cutter, and um, we were discussing the cutter. This particular design is by Copper Gifts. If you search, you'll probably find a compare, like a similar one. Copper Gifts is no longer uh, in operation. So I cannot suggest that you shop there. And I'm just outlining and flooding again in dual consistency icing so that there is no separation between that outline and... Um, yes. Oh, I see, Karen. I, that's what I also use. I use built-on meringue powder. I've been that's the only meringue powder I've been using for ever since I started. Well, the I, the food okay. color that I'm suggesting is really not expensive. Maybe it's just worth a try. Yeah. Maybe you know? it's something that it's very. Sometimes these things are really hard to figure out what's causing it. Thank you, Carrie, or Kari, sorry. Uh, Lorena has a question. So question, how long do cookies need to dry to get them um, hard final touch before bagging them? Um, 24 hours usually is good. I've heard people need more time. I think that might only be due to your climate, extreme humidity, but 24 hours generally is, is the safe. Hey, Ham, you agree? Yes, absolutely. Yes, that would be the same. Like if there, if you are making minis, it may not take as long. Um, I would say do a test run and then see, you know, uh, how long you really need. You may need a little less time, but 24, 24 hours will give you a safe. So here is the surface. I'm tilting it in the light. And you can see it's level. If you have trouble leveling your icing, usually if you just take it and agitate like this, it. It causes like that movement, helps it, and it self-levels. So here is a, a crusted one. So and Katie has an airbrush question for you. Where is a good place to buy a 0.5 gun? 
Well, I I bought well, Air, airbrush gun, airbrush gun, just yeah. a small airbrush gun. Mm -hmm. I bought all of mine on AliExpress. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the thing like I know AliExpress tends to be a long time to get your stuff, but if you look, they I didn't know. I recently saw that you can actually select faster shipping and pay a little bit more. And yeah, that's where I've bought mine and always gotten. Um, if you write me, Katie, on like one of the, you know, Facebook or wherever, I'll give you the link of the one I bought. But that's how I kind of get mine. I find that's like, you know, I, they're just, um, the American shops are just reselling uh, Chinese products. So I just go right to the source. All right. So now this has had time to crust and you can see that's nice and shiny. It actually went in the dehydrator for a little bit. And I'm just taking the line up here and I can't really see if I'm doing it good, but I'm taking it to the point. No, you you, you excellent. And you see, okay. I like to let the line fall. So the bag has a hole. It's like a spaghetti coming out. And so if I'm a little bit above and I let the line fall, the line stays, uh, you know, in, in the shape that it's coming out. If you're really close like this, well, you tend to, kind of cause the line to get wonky. And now I'm just filling in. Mar, do you, you don't use egg whites, you use meringue powder, right? I do, I a local yes. brand, it's called Bartelette. They sell it like, it's like for a commercial, uh, It's I get like a huge box. And that's like, it's just honestly the most affordable, even like because it's, it's always a bit cheaper when you buy like restaurant type, you know, that stuff. I'm connecting to those two little outside lines I initially created. I'm going to give it that shake. My icing sometimes will be a little finicky to heal. It's because I'm working in a thicker consistency. I just like to have it a bit thicker. It tends to not dry as, as flat to the surface. Now, while this is wet, I'm adding a little star to the top, a sprinkle. You can add whatever or nothing. Everybody's loving it. Hi. Hi, Heather. Thanks for joining us. It's a little Wilton star sprinkle. Just a nice, nice size. So, guys, I bought, and I don't know if it's still available in store, but at Michael's, they came out sweet. Um, Tooth Fairy came out with her new sprinkles when the season kind of started and she has a silver and a gold that is so gorgeous but you need to run to michael's because i don't think they're going to restock and it's just so nice so if you want to check that out for christmas and now i'm angling a brown line did you did, did you wait at all uh you didn't wait at all right you started talking the lines right yeah after you did that okay so there's my kind of like just branches and I'm connecting to that center and just angling slightly up and letting the line fall. Release the pressure when I know I want to cut and I pull away. There it is. And then I don't have to wait because my kind of like little uh, pine needles are not touching. And you want to make sure your cookie's at the right angle so that it's easier for you to pipe. And I'm just having some little tiny tear shapes coming out of those little brown lines. So Lorena is asking, we have a bagging question. Is there, are there specific bags for the icing? When I cut the tip, it is too small and comes out thin and curls. Can we use silicone bags? or not recommended also tips or no tips so uh, we can um i'm gonna bring it up so for the icing i think marlin now is using a tipless bag mm -hmm. i can uh, show them right before i start tipless bag um it is important when you're using tipless bag it does that it doesn't have a flap right mm -hmm that the seam is a nice clean seam. Otherwise you will have issues with the, how icing is coming out. It may be curling also that because your, your um, opening is small to the, compared to the pressure you're putting on the bag. So if your opening is small and you're pushing the bag really, 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 really hard, 
it's going to start coming out curly also. So release the pressure or make your opening slightly bigger. Another, another solution could be using a piping tip. Right. And, and also, also hand, maybe the hole isn't cut right, you know, if you cut Maybe it. the hole is not right. That that could also be, yes. Make sure that you cut it straight. I'll show you how I cut my, my tip was back. I think Mara cuts them the same way. So I'm barely okay. squeezing, eh? I'm barely, okay. barely squeezing. I don't need a lot. I'm just basically a drop and then dragging. My surface is dry, so I'm able to kind of like pull it onto the surface. And I can. Everybody's uh, loving it. Hello, hello to Colorado. We have a Colorado. My uh, my husband's name is Prado, and nobody can pronounce his name, so we use Colorado as an example. It's like you know, it's like Colorado, <laughs> and then they they all get it after that. He came up with it. It's really clever. So well, there it is. Now you can, <laughs> if you if you wanted. You could make a small little bird transfer. So where would you suggest, uh, Joyce is asking, where can a person purchase pearls that don't break teeth? Oh, well, um, you can get confetti sprinkles are pretty soft. And then you can look. Pearls, for pearls are hard to get that are not yeah. hard the, at the all. Chocolate, the chocolate pearls, yes. crisp pearls or six slits. Their brands are usually yes. pretty, pretty good. And now I'm just sprinkling, uh, you know, all over the tree here, some red icing dots, add them wherever you like. And if you want, you can wait for this to kind of dry before you add them so that the green has a bit of time to crust over so that they don't kind of like heal into each other, but. Oh, everybody is loving it. Victoria was hoping for a simple tree design. This is perfect. Beautiful, modern tree. Sally loves it. Hello. So darling. So recently, well, today, this morning, I published my this dress in my group. So this is a corset, and I used the corset to trim off my Christmas tree, and I made this. And so some people were asking about what to do with the royal icing transfers after you make them. So I have in my coffee shop uh, 10 templates for different royal icing transfers. And one of them, or two of them actually, because these are two different shaped ornaments, are these ornaments. And so if you wanted, you could also add this type of thing to your Christmas tree. Does that, you know, make them a little bit smaller. So for the last, Everybody's loving it. For the last thing, I'm going to have to move some stuff. And then, oh, Lynn, so Lynn, you've been decorating cookies all morning. Would eight hours be enough time before freezing? Hmm, I would wait overnight, I would wait a little longer, maybe yeah. just to be sure, depending also on what color. Some colors can take longer to dry. So, some of you don't have an airbrush, and the holidays are coming. One of the things that's fun on holiday cookies is a bit of shine. So, here I'm just putting a paper towel. And this is by Chef Master and it's Pearl. So I'm going to just glam up my gifts. So this is just a, a square with, it's a square with, that has a bit of a rounded corner. So you can use the pointed corner or whatever. And now I'm just going to Have you started on your Christmas shopping at all? Yes, of course. Oh, well, you have? Wow, you're really good. And here it is. Now, you, I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah, you can see it. Yes, yes, there is a little, little. So I have one here that doesn't have the pearl on it, and this one has the pearl. And you see, it's like it just gives it a touch. And so they sell them in all sorts of colors. So if you want to just add, maybe you want to add a little bit darker blue to your snowflakes. You know, you could do them in a pale, pale blue a touch of darker blue on the points, whatever. The only thing about those can mists, it's great product. But you can't go like really, like you know, in a, a spot. It's like yes. it's it's like a spray. It's like when you're but yeah. There's no way to like you can't really no aim with no, it. There's no aiming. <laughs> and now, and now I'm just adding with that red icing some uh, string kind of. 
to the gift here and see i'm just crossing over and then this way oh hi joseph thanks for coming like that okay and i'm going to add some branches to to this opening and we're basically copying the design from the tree and just adding some pine needles and you see the blue is a nice background for this color palette and this it looks intricate but you can go pretty fast your icing when it's not touching anything else it doesn't have to be super stiff to hold the line and it's much easier on your hand if you suffer from maybe arthritis or any kind of hand issues and you know it's painful for you you don't need to have a <coughs> hard ice oh joseph it's fine we understand and then one of the royal icing transfer things i have in the is a is a poinsettia so you can add a poinsettia to your gift this one here has a little pine cone and you see so you have a little bit of a variation so, karen is asking us is the what color is the background on your it's skin just really light blue so it's a light, light blue. blue but very very light light blue oh yes guys how was your halloween this is a great question this we can ask this uh, everyone let us know how was your Halloween? What did you guys wear? How did you how did you go to trick or treating? How much candy do you have? Do you have any? I wore my pajamas. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. Oh look at it's beautiful set. I like how you use the same kind of um, design to you know to keep it all within that same style on each cookie. Beautiful. Yeah. So the pine cone is um, just a mini uh, petal tip. It's in, it's in the group. If you're in the group, it's with, um, I did a cardinal gift box this year, and that's one of the projects in there. I built it on a M&M &M just to give it a little bit of a roundness. I, you know, the thing is, is you can work with royal icing dots, but they're not as tasty. At least this, you bite into it and you get a chocolate surprise. Oh, that's it. Thank you, Sally. Yes, usually, Carla, if you're working in similar colors, it usually can kind of look cohesive together, you know. Uh, if you're a beginner, less is more with regards to your color palette. If you can, and then if you're sometimes not sure, sometimes just using the similar color tones. Like you see, the tree is two shades of green. So it doesn't look so busy. The stuff still stands out that's on it. So it's not so, um, you know, it's, it's, it, the line is fast, quickly crossed when you're adding too much stuff, right? Thank you, everybody. I'm glad you like it. So we're gonna- Merry Christmas. So I'm going to bring a- Switch. Switch. <laughs> white here oh you can see all right excellent all right sorry i'm just i'm just um massaging my bag here you're so, massaging your bag <laughs> yes piping bag <laughs> so yes sometimes the yeah. icing separates all right so today i decided um by the popular demand you guys were asking for more tricky cookies so i decided to go with it and um there are lots of suggestions or, or some suggestions about the cutters. So if you don't have a, a turkey cutter or you want to make something a bit less um, complicated, I ended up using this cutter. This is a really nice scallop edge cutter. I think it's around three inches. And what I did, I trimmed at the bottom. Now you can trim it before you bake it. Some of them I didn't trim. I trimmed it after with a knife. I just cut it off. So I, tr I trimmed um, like four, what are these, scallops? Yeah. Yeah, so I trimmed four. You don't have, I, I don't, I mean, I think it should work without it, but I think trimming it just gives it a different look. And then I used, and this is a cutter that I've had for many, do you know what this is? Any idea? No. So this is a cutter from, and I love uh, nesting dolls. Oh. So, so this is, I don't know. 
this is one that uh, I don't know if the company even exists. It's not the highest, highest, highest quality, this one, but this is the 3D cutter. Um, so for this one, you could, what else could you use? You could use maybe um, well, two dots. There's actually a really cute little snowman. Or snowman, yes. A little like snowman. That. Okay. That would work. And there's one little snowman ha actually comes with a little top hat and the turkey is actually cute. With it has a top hat. Hat. Yeah. So that, so that would also work. Okay. So I'm going to first make the turkey or start working on the turkey because it needs a little bit of time to, to crust. So what I ended up doing. Denise is asking if we can freeze the leftovers. Yes, thing. you can freeze it. I have frozen relaxing many times. Um, you can freeze it. I do have an extensive post about it where I did a lot of testing with it on my blog. Just look up freezing royal icing and it should come up either in a Google search or on my in my search um, search bar on my blog, hanyelas.com. I don't I usually freeze my royal icing in the pots like this, in a ziplock, in a, um, um, in a piping bag, unless I have a big batch or something and then I put them in a ziplock bag. I don't recommend freezing icing for more than three times in a row. The same same bag because it starts to crystallize or something. Mm. And you can learn more about it on a blog. All right, so I'm using, this is brown royal icing here. And I'm just gonna outline and flat the whole thing. And then I'll do a quick wet on wet to create kind of like feathers look. It's also something that people use to create um, bubbles in uh, drinks. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, your coffee. No, 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 no. No. Right, you'll see. No. I think that's how, yeah. No, no. All right, so now I'm going to take my white, and this is about, um, so this is also about, 50, this is like 15, I think, runnier than. So I'm just going to make dots. Okay. And now with the same brown, I'm going to partially cover them, making kind of like a crescent shape. And since this is all done um, wet on wet, it's going to sink in. And if it's not sinking, you can help it a little bit just, OK? And then you have to let this crust. So once this is crusted, we can, I'm going to add another layer here on the top. Are you making a waddle today? Yes. Oh, you look at you, turkey anatomy. There you go. <laughs> but Jeremy said that yes, I will be making waddle. Jeremy said that the piece above the peak it is different, it's called differently. Right? All right, so then you have to let this crust again. So I'm gonna move it. All right, and here is the one that is already crusted. So we can actually add the eyes, the beak, and um, wild as well. All right, so I'm going to do the beak first. So I've got, this is kind of like a, um, not a golden yellow, but I add a little bit of orange or icing to my lemon yellow. Looks mustard yellow to me. Or mustard yellow. I Very had well. to give it a label. Very well. Let's call it a mustard yellow. Sounds good to me. I don't like yellow mustard. I never, I never cared for yellow mustard. I like Dijon. Do you, do you like mustard? No, I, I really can live without both. My life is fine without both. <laughs> um, you don't, have, you don't have to smother your, your bread in it. No, I don't do that. I just, it's a condiment, right? So I just, I use a little bit. But you don't, you don't need it. You don't use it in cooking at all. Very rarely, I do use a Dijon. Occasionally, I will make a honey mustard concoction for uh, the men in the house that eat meat. But that's about it. That's about it. Okay, got it. Now I'm gonna pick up a little dot of icing and just place it on. It's just easier than than um, trying to get the piping bag onto this small eye. It is yaller. 
That's right, Virginia. I know, Heather. So now I would suggest that you let the yellow be uh, be dry, uh, crust a little bit, okay, before you move. So we can just let that be. Now here are my cookies. So these I trimmed with a knife. Now I'm gonna show you a couple, I'm gonna start, um, I'll do this design first, and then we can do the other one. I can get my, this is a number, um, oh, it's clogged, are you kidding me? <laughs> Just my luck. So um, give me a second, I'm gonna try to unclog this. Is it coming? Oh, it's coming, I think. So I've got uh, like thick icing here in my piping bag and I'm using, this is a number three piping tip, round piping tip. So I'm going to be doing some brushed embroidery, very simple. Here I'm um, spraying some water on my paper towel so I can dampen my brush brush, and also wipe off any, any icing residue. I'm just going to have it on the side. Oh, I think so. Diana's asking if she could make a peacock with that, of course. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes, we could make a peacock. Hi, absolutely. Kathleen. Thanks for joining us. So I'm going to start on the edge here, and I'm going to do um, three or four at a time. It's a very fancy turkey. Yeah, I didn't. I, I was playing with different ideas, and um, um, yeah, I didn't want to do just trade. I have some that I did just wet on wet because you can just do that. It's very fast, and so these would be cute place settings. Yeah, that that was the whole idea. Place setting, place settings. You could do that. I love this scalloped edge cutter because the the edge is more rounded. If they're kind of on a larger size, mm -hmm. nice. And I use them actually. I'm releasing a new video. My patrons, I think you should have gotten the video. I think it came out. It, it went out today um, for pie cookies. And I have um, in my patron group. It's apple pie cookies, and then on YouTube, I'm, I'm releasing on, on Wednesday, blueberry pie cookies, and I use this same cutter, it's such a nice cutter. Is it still available? The cutter? Mm -hmm. I, uh, I believe it's in my Global Belly shop, and uh, I think it should be also on Amazon. Ah, Jennifer, it's, uh, then I guess it's to find one that, you know, a version that maybe is easier for you with, um, with that, maybe just, you use a pedal tip and do a, a, a pedal instead. Are you struggling with this technique? She has tremors. Oh, then don't do it. It's not worth, like, it's, yeah, I think Marlene's suggestion is excellent. Now you can do another layer. I did another layer here if you wanted to. I hope this is really bright, huh? Okay. We can uh, kind of stagger them and do another layer of, of um, brush, or you can just uh, add um, a layer of royal icing. I'm going to use my scribe just to see about the border. So Diana says she has trouble getting the brush embroidery. Is it because of her consistency or the brush or what do you think? Well, the I, I, I mean, I'm not an expert on brush embroidery, but I find myself that <clears throat> it's, depending on the look you're looking for, you know, I don't know what you look, what, what you're looking for. If you add too uh, little, little icing, then you have nothing to work with. So then there's not, you're going to brush, of all of the icing. So the line, the starter line needs to be thicker, I find. 
needs to be thicker so you can, <clears throat> excuse me, actually brush some of the icing off. And then um, I prefer it on a thicker side. If you want to, again, it depends on the design. You can use brushed embroidery with runnier, like softer icing, but then you won't get the texture because it's going to kind of get all smooth. So I don't know what your struggles are. That's hard to um, you know, help. I don't know what your struggles are. Also, the brush matters. This is um, this is a quarter inch. This is Vilton, and this is I think from a set of five, I believe. So now I'm going to show you how about the piping tips. Uh, Lauren, I think, was asking about the pipe about the piping this piping bag. So this is a tipless piping bag. There is a seam here. And you want to make sure that the seam is clean, that it doesn't have a flap, because that flap is going to mess up how the icing is coming out. So what I like to do, I like to uh, flatten it in the middle where the seam is, like so, and then... Okay, I just want to interrupt. So when she's talking the flap, it's manufacturing of the bag. There are some come like... Yes. Um, many sellers. Like this is a flap, right? This is a... This is a yes. This is a bag, so... This is a flap. So imagine this is your seam. So you don't want anything to overhang. Okay. You don't want anything like that. Sorry. Yes. Thanks for um, stepping in. So you want to flatten it in the middle and then do not cut here. Okay, guys. Oh my God. <laughs> icing is going to come out. You will have no control and your table is going to be orange. But and your cookies will be filled very quickly. Well, you won't have more cookies still because this is going to take one cookie and you'll be done. Uh, so, and then don't cut like this. You know, when you're trying to make a round opening, make sure that you cut straight across. Now, I made a pretty big opening and this is not totally straight. <laughs> so don't do what she did. Do what she said. <laughs> what, what, what I said is... It's hard because I'm trying to put it in a in a in a view of the camera. Yes, yes. Now, also, if you haven't decorated cookies before and you have no idea, like okay, she said, like what size you should cut it. So get yourself some piping tips. Okay, this is a number two and number four. So and then what you can do with your do I have a clothes bag here? Uh, here. What you can do, you can put your piping piping bag inside, you know, and then see how much it's coming out. This is not, uh, uh, you know, science, okay? I just wanted to, like, figure out how much to cut off. That's all. You can figure it out based on the tips that you can get, see how big, of, how, how big of an opening those have. Okay. So now I'm going to do simple wet on wet. We're going to, I'm going to ice this with orange, and then I'll use some yellow... Oh no, I should do blue. Do you guys, oh, I'm gonna do blue instead of that. No, I'm gonna do blue. I like this blue. Very nice. Okay. Now the design that I'm about to do, it's the, I think the most popular and um, all skill levels friendly um, design, wet on wet, really easy. Sally, are you listening? It's easy. It's very easy. Sally just did, uh, she did uh, your, she did some, you, you did uh, something, uh, your cookie she did. I have what to go back, I can't keep up with Sally. Yes, uh, Sally, is, uh, she's prolific. She's like, she's faster than us. She, we, we we post and the next day it's done. Yes. And she does it. So now I'm going to use, I'm going to use actually white here. It's a turkey peacock. That's correct. Oh, it's a turkey peacock. Okay. Yeah, Karen. Yeah. Sally says it's very easy. No problem. Okay, and now you take your scribe. I'm gonna start in the middle. I find it's better than starting off, off the off the, the edge here. 
because I'm able to divide my lines better. I'm trying to aim towards the center here, the, the bottom edge. Oh, Julie, it, it, we're just teasing Sally, but you, there's no, it's not a, a race. We go at our own pace. Okay, so that's one design. Um, and then you can also add, this one is uh, already kind of crusted. So what you can, what you can do, you can then come in with Is this 1520 consistency? The flood was, yes, the flood, flooding, yes. This one, it's thicker, the one I'm using now. You can add dots around. This is about 20, I would say. And can I ask you, there's a little bit of orange or something there. Is that a mistake? Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a mis, mishap. I, I, I was using orange and then I... You didn't like it? Yes, I didn't like it. And then I, would, I used blue and then I didn't like it either. So there is also, there are two layers of different colors. That I scraped just out. wondering if, if it was your marker that had bled, that's why I was oh, no. asking. No, no. See on the edge here, it's all like uh, from the icing. So let's say, guys, you had that happen and you scrape off your icing and see at the bottom she has that. You can use the microplane actually to clean off yes. the leftover icing if you're, you know, she's just using it for this demo video, but if you were serving them at your Thanksgiving, you know, and you wanted them to look Perfect. You just microplane it off, and then boom, you have a pristine cookie. I might do that before I, I, I take a picture of them. That's a good idea. And then what you can do here is a um, this little guy. So now the waddle. So I'm going to do. I've seen them online coming from uh, either left side or right side. I don't think it really matters. I'm just going to go. Very nice. So Diane, Diana's asking about again the curling coming out of the piping tip, uh, or the piping bag. We discussed that earlier. Well, I, I personally think it's because the, the the pressure, it's not the 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 opening on the piping tip is not corresponding correctly to the pressure you're putting on a bag. So you're putting too much pressure, or that could be something the Oreo icing is too thick. Or something like that. If you continue having these problems, then I would suggest that you invest in a PME tip. If you are, you know, experiencing that with uh, like when you are piping details. Oh, really? It's just sorry. Nice. That's kind of gross. Why do they save the feathers and put them in their hats? <laughs> no, uh, you know, we really pick up for for turkeys. I guess when there was a. I mean, I don't know. There wasn't enough. Turkey. There was so many things that were disgusting. I mean, really, they just really. So, um, yes, it is very nice for blue underneath. But I was talking about at the bottom there, at the bottom where um, the uh, show what I'm talking about, Han. Show your bottom, the bottom part edge where it's cut. That's where mm -hmm. I just. Referring. So I iced this cookie all with orange. I scraped it off. Then I iced it all with blue. I scraped it off, and then I decided to do brushed embroidery. That's correct. Then what you can do. So you think it looks like a peacock? <laughs> no, it's just the color palette. I think they they. Oh, made. the color palette. Yeah, that maybe that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I agree about that. Oh, now that's writing Joseph. Joseph's writing a book. Oh, that's awesome. Writing. He's been a busy guy. Hey, he got over uh, his illness, and now he's writing a book. So there, and what you can actually do with these, you can stand them up. Whoops, no, it's not ready yet because these guys, you could stand them up, but I do like them flat like this, okay? So now, Lorraine is asking, how do you outline thinly and then fill in thickly? Oh, well, that's, you increase the- uh, um, The squeeze. You, I'll do one with orange, let's do that. You just increase the squeeze, that's all. So because I'm using runny icing, this is 15 seconds. So you don't have to put, put too much pressure on the bag for the icing to come out. I'm literally, I'm not putting much pressure on it. Very little pressure. So 
I'm, gonna... I'm just letting the gravity do its kind of job. And so when you are ready to fill, I'm going to increase the pressure and you see how much more icing is coming out now. It's a little right. bit like in the car. You press a little bit on the gas and then you press a lot on the gas. Yeah. I like that. So now I'm just going to use my scribe. You were going to say, sorry, keep interrupting you. That's fine. Uh, Diana wants to know, is there anything that you struggle with? Every You look like everything's so easy. Me? Well, both of us she's asking, but I'm asking you. Oh, of course I struggle. A technique that you struggle with. Technique, um, um, well, there are things that I'm not, I'm not going to talk about, but I think that I'm not good at. <laughs> that would be, no, um, there are a few things that I, I find now when I'm, uh, not that I'm, I've been decorating for a while, I try not to do too many um, lace designs like lattice, you know, I used to do those, very fine, it's very time consuming and you really have to have a butt of steel because you're going to be sitting at one cookie for an hour and nobody gets it, everybody's like, oh, it's so pretty but nobody gets how much time you spend. So those, I, I don't struggle with it, but I just don't like to do them as much as I used to. I mean, um, when it takes a very long time, I, I'm not, I don't know. Um, I'm not the greatest, I suppose that, oh, this is fig icing. I took a different bag, Never mind. Doesn't matter. I'm not best at um, painting. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm with you on the painting. I'm not very good at painting. That's something that I, something that is kind of um, not not that I couldn't do it, but I, I just um, yeah. Well, if I you know in my like for me, I don't I don't find I paint well, and so I don't do it. And I work towards mm -hmm. my strengths. I do the stuff that I feel I'm yeah, more, exactly. you know that you are good at. Yes. Yeah, I think painting is probably probably one of the yes. There's no icing police. So now I'm just going to bring it up, bring it through. And this is super easy. I think these are probably more traditional colors than the colors I chose for the other one. So Judy, the the shiny is your meringue powder and drying time. So ideally you're using a fan to speed up the drying time. And at this point, if you'd like, you can also add some sprinkles. Oops, I went a little too deep. So this is this got a heel coming there. All right. So these are just some white non paroles. And I'm just gonna add some just going to add some interest to the whole thing. I'm wondering what the background would look like if you didn't use white. You mean uh, Julie when she did the brush embroidery? Oh yeah. Well, uh, uh, I also did one like this, which I actually have to say I really like this one. Um, so what I did, I I did the, this border, and then you have to let it crust, and then I did the brush. And then I did the middle and the dots and all. Okay. So, yeah, that's my, uh, so here's my finished, I'm, I'm going to say peacock now. You guys all got me, here is also the orange one. So I don't know. So I do like the orange ones, but I also like the blue ones. Well, I mean, if you run an orange line in the blue one, then they tie together and you can Yes, they do. yes. That's, true. They do. that's true, yes. Yes, it is so. Amber's thing. Yes, yes, it very much is. How long did it take you to prep the crust? Into the oh, so today I worked in the morning on the... Well, here in Spain, it's... Um, um, it's going to be, we have a time difference now, five hours, the time change. So it's seven hours. It's going to be seven hours here. So I worked on these in the morning. So to let them kind of crust, but I always place my cookies in front of a fan if I can. Well, I'm glad you, you enjoy it, Diana. We, we, 
you know, we do it because we enjoy spending time with you guys. And it's always nice to gather with people that, you know, enjoy the same yes, interests. Exactly. And, and I also have another tutorial for the turkey coming out. And that's the buttercream one that I did a couple of weeks ago, also on Tuesday. That is very easy. And it's all buttercream and done on soft loft house cookies. So for the flooding, um, I personally usually use 15 to sometimes 20, 15 to 20, I would say. Oh, Joseph, thank you. So, yes, yeah, she was wondering about the white. Uh, uh, what was the question again before, Julie? No, oh, I didn't I'm trying to see. Oh, no. Julie, maybe uh, write your question to Han. I can't find, because the comments are coming in from all the platforms. I can't find the other. The cookie cutters, we amass over the years, anywhere yeah. and everywhere. Oh, anywhere, yes. These days, even you, it's massive. I do like Ann Clark cutters. They are very popular. They have different shapes. Um, Oh yeah, that's the same. Yes, yeah, okay. Yes, I guess it does. Yes, it does. With the with the well, yeah, I I glued it on. It was glued on. Thank you, Kathleen. So the soft cookie recipe, the loft house one, for your turkey. Uh, not for these. These are sugar cookies. But the other one, the with buttercream, yes, that is the loft house. I have to say, those are really good. Oh yeah, well you can just you just do it the way you want, you know. I was looking online and some of the images of the turkeys, the the, the paintings had white uh, incorporated in because it's uh, usually brown, I guess. So they there was a lot of like white um, um, feathers, so that's why I decided to do with white. But you can obviously, you know, and and the, also colors. If you do a different cookie that's maybe more pigmented, like a gingerbread or hands honey cookies that are more colored, then the white pops even more, right? If they're using a different yes, absolutely. cookie. Yes, yes. I can see these down uh, this down dark color though. I can see down dark color. You could even paint it with gold. You can do anything you guys want. These are just, you know, some ideas. So, so can... Han, when you added your turkey, if you would have put it flush to the bottom, they could stand up and you could make like... Oh, little... yeah, yeah, they could stand up. Yeah, that, but the idea, they were going to stand up. Yeah, it could stand up. You could have another, let's say, oops, let me bring this up. It's a little too close. So you could have another, let's say this is round. Imagine this is not uh, trimmed. So you could stand it up, you mm -hmm. know? Super cute. You could stand stand up like that. And the bottom, I suppose you could do um, uh, whatever color you want. I don't know. I would even leave it like this, maybe. Well, you could fill the bottom with um, green, like grass or... Like grass or something like that. Even a grass tip. Grass tip might be nice. Just do a whole thing with grass tip and just stick it on. And it would kind of also help, uh, you know, hide some of the exposed cookie here. So grass, it might be nice. I might actually do that. I don't know. That was the idea, but then I just decided to do it different, do it, do it differently. And you can also use your, like Mar said, um, microplane, your zester to shave the bottom so it's nice and um, you know uh, sharp and what it can be flush, you can go flush onto the cookie that you're gonna stand so, it on. So Diana, you're asking how to not uh, like overflow. Overflow the uh, overflowing your border. Oh, just, when you're, oh, when you are flooding. Um, practice. Well, like I said, it's a lot of practice, and um, as you saw, I wasn't really putting any pressure. I just really let the gravity do its job. When I'm flooding, when I'm outlining, when I'm outlining, I'm not really squeezing it. I'm mostly just guiding, kind of like trying to, you know, put the line where actually where, where the cookies and. Um, um, and then, um, yeah, I would, yeah, it's, it's just practice. And then yeah. you, you try to flood it and I would say you can leave few sections un, um, undecorated and then use your scribe to, you know, to move the icing. And then if you see that there are any kind of dimples, you can always fill it in later. 
or if there's too much icing, then you can use one of these tools. You know, we always have them on hand. You can use your um, cookie scraper. I don't know if Mark has a cookie scraper. You know, these, these tools are really handy to have because you can use it to pick up icing. So you can, like, pick it up. Lift it off, yeah, scoop it off. Yeah, but, scoop, uh, scoop, scoop it off, yes. Have you decorated yet? Because once you feel it and you do it, like it's like it's it's one of those things that you just kind of have to do and and feel to get the hang of it. You can watch a lot of videos, but you just have to jump in and give it a try, and then you get acclimated to it. Yeah, don't start on a round if I can recommend. Start on a heart or something, something more uh, forgiving. A round is very can be kind of depressing if you're just starting out. By depressing, I mean that you don't get it right and you you think will feel yes. like you failed or something but yes we all yes. struggle with rounds so i would start with a heart or a star or so, not not a star but some some you know other shapes that are more forgiving and you don't you know you don't see that you didn't make it so so perfect um, well then it could also be done and then your icing is maybe too too runny it could also be right but it's slightly you know it's runnier than it like the, it should be. You can also use, um, Kali uses this, um, you know, she uses a palette knife, I think, or a spatula. You can also use that to smooth the icing. Um, and that, that icing could be, I think, a little thicker than what you're using. Yeah. Well, it depends good. on the design you're making. Sometimes the icing doesn't have to be super level. So if your icing is on the thick side and it's not super flat, if you're adding more stuff to it, it doesn't really matter. So we're at an hour, hand. Yeah, an hour, all right? So we're gonna wrap it up. Okay. Well, thanks see. everybody for joining us. If you'd like to support us, you can uh, sign up to our uh, groups on Patreon. We each have our yes. group on Patreon or support us on uh, coffee by purchasing our templates and uh, different digital and just don't forget to check out my youtube I'm coming out with a new video tomorrow guys 3 p.m eastern time oh it's, it's scheduled it's scheduled right on time <laughs> so we'll see you guys on friday for more cookie decorating we have no idea as usual what we're doing anyway, do you i don't yes mm -hmm. we're so organized but anyway we'll see you friday we'll be there at least we know that Thanks, guys. Bye, everybody.